Donald Trump's appeared before a judge in that courtroom in D.C., where he has entered a not guilty plea in relation to four charges that were brought against him over the 2020 presidential election. Now, we're showing you pictures from live outside court. There are supporters, there are detractors. There are some arguing that by this point, third indictment in, we're not quite getting the same level of reaction. But as you can see there, it's a pretty orderly crowd. Nothing untoward has happened yet. From inside the courtroom, the judge was actually uh, 15 minutes, 19 minutes rather, late into court before the court was in session. The gavel was banged. Trump stood up with his lawyers and everyone else at the all rise order. He has pled guilty to all four charges that have brought before him in this current indictment. And we did actually hear from his lawyer outside the courtroom. If your last name's Trump, it's very different. So Hillary Clinton could have a problem when she lost the election and we could have a complete liberal meltdown, as we all saw. But when we have dignified disagreements, we take them to court, we say do things patriotically and peacefully, he's to blame for things that he did not himself do. And that's what we're seeing. Frankly, folks, this is not about that. This is about politics. This is about 2024. Well, for more conversation, joined now by former British Conservative MP Louise Mensch, who's based stateside. And still with me here in the studio, Talk TV presenters Nicola Thorpe and Mike Graham have been bringing us in a lot of lively discussion and chat throughout the last hour. Of course, they're normally on the talk at this time. It's very, very kind of them <laughs> to share the studio this evening. Uh, but obviously, Donald Trump does demand this kind of attention from all these great guests we've had so far. And let's get over to Louise now and get your reaction to what we've been seeing so far. Do you think it's fair to say the reaction has been somewhat more muted to this indictment, despite the fact that charges could, are more serious? I don't think that's actually true if you look at the media coverage over here. Everybody over here on the American TV channels, on the American newspapers, is talking about this as the most serious of the probably four indictments that he's going to face with one to come in Georgia. So although you're seeing perhaps the crowd is a bit more muted because now it's another day, it's another Donald Trump indictment, that's not the case when it comes to the media coverage of the event. Look, uh, one of the big debates we've been having the last two nights when we've been talking about this is this First Amendment right to free speech, to have what's called a false opinion or a false idea. This, of course, is at the heart of whether Trump really believed what he was saying when he uh, demanded recounts or said that votes weren't uh, as they were. Uh, and it's whether he believed it and then delivered that truth to the, his followers and supporters or whether he didn't believe it, but still spouted it anyway. And it's going to be a very, very hard thing to test in court is what we've been hearing. Talk to us about how you think this will be approached and where you think it's going to be won or lost. Well, sometimes I think some of the uh, commentators and guests on your show haven't actually read the indictment because Jack Smith, the special counsel, makes it completely clear that he believes he is accusing Donald Trump of knowingly lying about the election, which, by the way, he says he's allowed to do under the First Amendment, but then converting that into a conspiracy by using those lies to pressure state lawmakers to go against the Constitution, for example, to tell the governor of Georgia that he just needed to find exactly the right amount of votes to get him over the top, um, by trying to interfere in the counting of votes, by trying to pressure Mike Pence into changing the results of the election. That's what's not legal in America. Um, and uh, I think it was Mike who said that it is absolutely not legal in America. That's a crime. It's a conspiracy against rights. And when you do that, when you try to overturn a legitimate election, you're actually taking away the votes of everybody who vote for the other guy and who actually beat you. Uh, and that's what Jack Smith says he he's going to prove in court. So we can say, well, did he believe it or didn't he believe it? The indictment's really clear. In the first two sentences, it says that Donald Trump was knowingly lying when he pushed this line and that he was doing it to try to overturn an American election. That's why this is so serious. Just getting uh, some live updates from within the courtroom that the uh, hearing has now finished. Trump will next be in court on August 28th and he's been ordered not to speak with witnesses in the case. Louise? I think that's going to be very difficult. If yeah. there's one thing we all know about Donald Trump is that he does love to speak, doesn't he? He does love to, if not tweet, send out his messages on Truth Social. Um, and as with Michael Cohen in the past, he's been accused of uh, contacting witnesses. This judge is um, fair. She was a former public defender, but she's not going to have any nonsense from Donald Trump or any other defendant in her courtroom. So that's the condition that I think he'll find difficult to obey, but he probably will do his best to obey it given the legal danger that he's in. 
Let's cross live back to Joe Walsh as well. Trusty Joe Walsh is still there in Washington, D.C. for us to talk about that and whether or not we do think Trump is going to be able to comply with those conditions. Of course, not to speak with witnesses, as Louis said, might be tricky given he loves his tweets or his truth socials, rather. I think generally he will. I think the next 15 months are going to be all about Donald Trump. I think any, any and all of his Republican candidates are toast. I think, that, I think it's over. Um, and I, again, I, as an opponent of Donald Trump, I'm not convinced that these, Luis is right, it will be four indictments against him. I'm not convinced that these will hurt him in a 50-50 country. He could get reelected. People need to understand that. Luis, is he, uh, the other contenders toast, DeSantis, that's it, boom, gone. No, I think you have to, I don't agree with Joe that he's got a decent chance of getting elected. He's got a very good chance of winning the primary. I think he's absolutely toast in the general election. Independents didn't want him in 2020. How much less likely are those independent voters, those swing marginal voters that make the difference? How much less likely are they to go for him when he's under every indictment known to mankind? And as it was mentioned earlier, has lost a civil case where he was accused of sexual assault. Uh, Women are a very important voting bloc. I don't think personally he's got a chance in the general election. And that's why I think that just maybe down the line, Republican voters, they might come to their senses and say, look, we really hate Joe Biden. We love Donald Trump, but we hate Joe Biden more. And maybe they will start looking at an alternative candidate that can actually win the election. Because one thing I do know, if Donald Trump is the nominee, Joe Biden is going to win 2024 in a landslide. And how badly do the GOP primary voters really want that when it comes down to it, when we're closer to the election than we are now. Yeah, that is the other argument. Let's bring your mic in the studio because we've heard, you know, you accusing Joe of kind of helping Trump back to the White House. But the other argument here is that all of this and is happening is actually helping Biden secure the nomination. Well, although the, see, presidency. the trouble with, with all of that, though, is that, yeah, if it's Trump against Biden, it's a two horse race. And, and any political analyst will tell you worth his weight or her weight in gold uh, is that if it's a two horse race. Anybody can win it. You know, something could happen to Joe Biden. You know, he's not exactly uh, in the full fullness of health at the moment. If he's expected to go for another four years, he's expected to go through another campaign. Don't forget the last campaign was held during COVID. He didn't go anywhere. He didn't even go out on the stump. Nobody saw him. He was hiding in a basement most of the time. So in the end, you know, if you've got the Democrats, the best thing that they can provide is Joe Biden. I think people will, will be horrified by, by the general spectacle of all of it. And they'll just go, we don't really want to vote for anybody. Maybe it'll be a low turnout and Trump could maybe win that way. So I don't think you could be sure about writing anybody off. I think, but I do agree with Joe that I think there's no doubt that Trump is now the nominee for the Republican Party. It can't be anything else. Well, Nicola, you were talking earlier on about the third option wish that some American voters could have. But if they were presented with Trump or Biden, yeah. I mean, Biden, is it really that terrible? I, mean, I don't know. I, I mean, look, he, he won four years ago, three years ago. And I don't know if he was that much healthier back then. Seems I think worse, it was all it? a little bit. But at the, at the end of the day, I think that Trump is still so much more the worst option in the majority of American people's eyes, in the sensible people's eyes. I mean, over here in this country, it's, it's mad to me. The way we see it, and yes, we are onlookers, we're not living in that country, but the way we see it, we go, America must be mad to even consider getting Donald Trump back. But again, we look at Joe Biden and say, yeah. that would be really difficult if that was our prime minister. Also, remember back to 2016 when Trump won, um, you know, nobody thought he would. I mean, there was absolutely no. no chance of him winning that election. He was written off right up until practically the end. Right? Also, I think those in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. We don't have a brilliant one <laughs> in the UK. It's not been fascinating and fantastic candidates, I would argue, in the last few years or so. Anyway. <laughs>